Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of Adafruit Industries, Limor Free. Hello there, um, and my name is Lamore Freed, and I'm an MIT trained engineer, and I run a company here in New York that does electronics manufacturing called Adafruit Industries. And the really interesting thing about this company is most of the time when I go to speak at events, like business events, I say, oh yeah, so like, we manufacture electronics and sell them. But that's actually totally a lie. That's actually not what we do. What we're really doing is we're teaching people about electronics by giving away everything as open source hardware. And then we also have a store. So if you want to you know, build the stuff yourself and learn it and become an engineer, um, you can follow our instructions online to design all these cool projects and products. Or if you just want to you know, buy the product, you can do that. And so that's how we um, sustainably run our store. Um, another way to talk about this that maybe makes a little more sense is like, imagine that we're a test kitchen. So I'm the chef, and I'm coming up with all sorts of weird recipes and stuff. And we also have a restaurant next to the test kitchen. So some people were just like, well, I want to try out this crazy new freeze-dried food. OK, they'll just go to the restaurant, buy a dish, and eat it. But because we give away all of our recipes, and we have videos and techniques and tutorials and public cookbooks that we publish online, a lot of aspiring chefs end up coming to our website or going to our you know, video show. And they're learning techniques, and they take them back to their restaurants, to their kitchens. And then they take those techniques and recipes and adapt them and modify them. And then they give it back to the community again. Now, not everybody does this. Some people just end up you know, taking it to their home kitchen and cooking food for their you know, kids or wives or husbands. But enough people are building businesses contributing back to the community of these recipes that we actually have a very vibrant community of people doing open source hardware. And um, one of the things that's really cool about giving a talk on open source hardware is how easy it is. Um, now, nobody likes to get up on stage and talk to a room full of people. But the cool thing about open source hardware is I don't have to come up here and sell you a pipe dream. I don't have to tell you, oh, like this is something that might happen in the future, and wouldn't that be awesome? Because all this stuff is happening right now all over the world. And so all I have to do to, to predict the future is just describe it accurately as it's happening right now. So um, a lot of people, when I talk about open source hardware, like, the first thing they ask is, like, well, what, what the hell is that? I don't even know, I don't even know one of those words. But um, the thing about open source hardware that's it's, it's easy to explain is that although probably a large number of you aren't engineers or coders or software developers. You probably use the internet. And the internet is based almost completely on open source software. So from Apache, which is the web server that serves up these pages, or Ruby and PHP, these open source programming languages that run you know, the dynamic content to MySQL, a database server that holds almost all the information that's on these open source um, you know, websites built on open source software and running on open source Linux computers. So the good thing about open source software, which has been developed for 25 years, is because this software is free, both as speech, right, you can give it away, replicate it, adapt it, duplicate it, and free as in beer, that is, you don't have to pay for it, it's helped commodify the internet, that is, bring the price down so much that anyone here can get a free email account, a free website, um, a free blogging page, that's actually so cheap, it's basically free. And what I think is neat about open source hardware is what we're trying to do is take all this development that's happened in open source software that's helped basically democratize and commodify the internet and do that for hardware devices as well. So um, one of the things that's really helped in this is that in the last decade, something really cool has happened. Because everyone here has a cell phone, the cost of the components in cell phones has plummeted. So when I was in school, we used to play around with like really expensive sensors like accelerometers, compass modules, GPSs. This is military-grade hardware. It wasn't designed for cell phones, right? This stuff was designed for military use, industrial use. And it was hundreds of dollars to get even the most basic sensor. But now it costs a dollar. It's in every Wii controller for video games. It's so cheap that it's basically commodified. And with that, we have all these engineers who, instead of just like doing their day job as electrical engineers, they then come home and they say, well, this stuff is so cheap, I want to just play with it. And so for the last decade, we've had all these electrical engineers playing around with hardware, doing it at home, and starting to take the philosophies of open source software, giving stuff away, documenting it, improving, um, both in speech as in beer, free as in, and also improving it, 
Um, to the point where, at first, you know, a decade ago, it was something like, okay, I'm an electrical engineer, and I come home and I can, you know, muck around with this stuff. To then, um, you know, you're getting students getting involved in this stuff because the price has gotten low enough that they can do it um, for classes. And then finally, like, the artists got involved, and so now you've got artists using uh, development platforms like Arduino to make interactive art. And before you know it, now it's high school kids, and then grade school kids. And so this technology is actually being pushed down farther and farther from used to be you had to have four years of differential equations to now we actually have magazines where this is a weekend project to do very complicated projects like building your own cell phone. Um, so I think the philosophy of open source hardware uh, is really powerful. And there's two really good things that you're probably thinking of right now. One is that the effect of open source hardware and giving away this information and disseminating it all over the world is that we're going to hopefully commodify more of this hardware, make it low cost, make it more available, make it so pretty much anyone can integrate these sensors and designs into low cost hardware. There's something else interesting that's happening at the same time. Because we're doing open source licensing, that is, I can design something and give away the plans, I've separated the intellectual property side, patents, copyrights, um, you know, and other intellectual property controls, from the manufacturing side. So I can design something and put it out there, and I don't necessarily have to worry about manufacturing. Somebody else who has a factory can come to me and say, hey, we really like your design for the solar charger that you have, or uh, you know, this power monitoring system like the Tweetawatt. And this did happen. We designed an open source power monitoring system for homes that uses uh, Twitter to publish power usage. And all these companies came to us and said, hey, that's so cool that you gave it up for free because I have a company and I want to manufacture that, but I didn't want to have to pay an engineer. But you did it for free. So I'm just going to take your stuff and I'm going to manufacture it. And I was like, that's so cool. It's exactly what I want. Because by dividing the intellectual property from manufacturing, I no longer have to worry about finding a factory, finding somebody to um, manage the factory and manufacturing, somebody to do the tooling, somebody to do distribution. There are other people who are very interested in doing that work because they have companies and businesses that are in that market. Um, so I want to actually bring up three uh, really good examples that can get you thinking about what open source hardware is doing right now. Pardon me. <clears throat> Um, the first example um, is actually what Brie Pettis was talking about, which is 3D printers. Um, Brie Pettis ha makes this 3D printer called the MakerBot, and it's open source hardware. What happened is five years ago, um, you know, a, a lot of people sort of all over the internet suddenly decided, like, hey, we want to make low-cost 3D printers. Take something that was $100,000 and bring it down to $1,000 levels. And the people who originated these projects, such as RepRap or Fab at Home, had this really weird idea that not only were they going to build this project, but they're also going to give it all away. And they're going to give it out away, away um, under licenses that allowed anyone to modify, adapt, redistribute, manufacture. And so now, from one or two projects, we have like a tree of 100 different types of 3D printers. And, you know, some of them only one person built, and some of them are like MakerBot, where there's thousands of them. But each one of them is an iteration to quickly create better quality at lower costs uh, based on this idea of a 3D printer. So instead of having one company that has the patent and you're hoping that that company in the ne next 17 years does something really good with this patent, you don't have to worry about it because you have 100 people constantly trying to outdo each other. This is what I call the um, skateboarding culture of open source hardware. Um, the next example that I really like is um, a project called the Global, Construc uh, Global Const Village Construction Set. And basically, it's a group of people, and I think they're in the Midwest, and they decided, hey, you know, there's a lot of tools that people use to create um, a lot of construction and farming tools that people need. And we think that we can design these tools in a way that makes them easy to manufacture from mild steel, some welding, common motors, lithium, uh, sorry, uh, lead-acid batteries, sort of common worldwide um, you know, uh, uh, materials. And so a lot of people say, like, okay, well, this is kind of like a bit of a pipe dream project because, like, you're not going to take, you know, uh, deer or international harvester out of business. Like, you can't compete with caterpillars. It's like DIY stuff. But I say, let's look at it the other way. Instead of thinking, how can we put John Deere out of business, if you're in a community and they need a certain type of tool, 
And they have a threshing machine, but it's not quite what they need because of the different land they have, because of the different materials they're trying to thresh. If they go to uh, Caterpillar and say, hey, I need you to make this custom tool um, based on your threshing machine for my community, they're probably going to say no. Because if you don't have 100,000 customers, it's not worth it for us to spend that R&D time. But if you have the R&D taken care of by these open source hardware projects, then people can actually learn and build upon the public information that's out there to create their own tools as necessary. So um, wrapping up, uh, you know, I've been working on a lot of projects lately. And one of the cool things about doing open source hardware is when I release stuff like the Tweetawatt or you know, solar chargers or any of the other future projects I'm working on, the cool thing is, is that how many people come to us and say, thank you so much for giving this away. Not only did I learn something by following your plans and documentation, but then I, I then founded my own company to manufacture something so that I can distribute it to my own community, whether that community is in a developing nation, as some are, or even somebody's high school. So I think when you think about these technologies and how we're going to get them to be distributed across the globe, think about how um, you know, the separation of intellectual property and manufacturing, distributing information, and empowering people in the community to build upon the technologies that we're releasing so they can improve them for their own needs, not just what we think are their needs. All right, thank you.